Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu and I teach here at Dunwoody College of Technology in the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department. Today we're going to be learning about conduit and conduit bending. Now conduit is an integral part of an electrician's job. So to learn how to bend, which will be used in a residential, a commercial, or an industrial setting, is very helpful for any kind of electrician out there. So today we're going to go through some terms, then we're going to learn some bends, and eventually we'll do some follow-up on some more tougher bends or more complex types of bends. So to start with, first thing you need to learn about a bender or a conduit bending is the actual conduit bender. Now a conduit bender is a pretty simple unit. You can use this up to an inch and a quarter pipe. Today we'll be doing demonstrations on half inch EMT, but it can be used for other types of raceways. The three most common used raceways out there is IMC, which is intermediate metal conduit, EMT, which is electrical metallic tubing, and RMC, which is rigid metal conduit. These three types of conduits are what we call raceways, and we use them to pull our wires through in order to connect from box to box or equipment to equipment. So in order to use them, we have to bend them sometimes. Sometimes we have a straight line that we can use, but other times we have to go around a, an obstruction or we have to change our direction. And by doing that, we use one of these, a conduit bender. Now the bender has four parts to it. It has the hook, where your conduit is going to lay into. It has its shoe, and the shoe is what's going to help you bend it. it has the heel, which is where you're going to apply your pressure to bend the conduit, and the handle in order for you to pull backwards on it. So these are the four parts of a bender. In addition to the bender, we have some other small markings on our bender, which tell us, kind of give us a guide on where we want to put our marks to. So one is the arrow, which is used for our stub ups and for some of our offsets. We also have what we call the notch. And the notch is basically a center of a 45 degree bend. You won't use the notch a whole lot except if you're doing what we call a three bend or three point saddle. And the last one I'm going to point out is called the star. And the star is the back of a bend or a back of a 90 degree stub. We also have on this particular bender some markings here which basically give me my angles. Since conduit bending is angle oriented, we have a 10 degree, a 22, a 30, a 45, and a 60, and that's how we're going to gauge ourselves when we bend our conduit, particularly when we're doing offset bending. In addition to our benders, we also have some terminologies. And terminologies is an important piece in order to understand what you're going to do. So the first term I'm going to use is called a stub. Okay. A stub is basically a 90 degree bend. Okay. And what it's talking about is I have a piece of conduit here and I stub up into my box. So this point from here to here is called the stub or usually the short end of the 90 degree bend. We have another term called the tail. The tail is the back end of a 90 degree bend and normally is the longer piece of conduit that we have. We also have a couple other terms and they're basically a take up value. Okay? Because when we bend something, we tend to change the radius of the pipe or make it a little longer or a little shorter. So what we have is what we call a stub take up. And the stub take up is the amount of, of pipe that we're going to gain by the lift of the 90 degree bend. We have a back take up, and the back take up refers to the amount of conduit that we lose in the process of bending. The last one we have is what we call gain. Gain happens every time we make at least a 90 degree bend. Anything less than that, we lose some of our conduit length. But gain refers to when I do a full 90 degree bend, I'm going to actually gain some of the length I have. What that means is I can take a long piece of conduit here, and I mark it at a certain point, and this conduit might be approximately, let's say, oh, 
40 inches or so. When I mark it and bend it, I actually, on a half inch conduit, I'm going to gain about two and a half inches, approximately depending upon my bender. So I'll gain on the overall length, but I will lose on this tailpiece. And that length I'm going to lose is about two and a half inches as well. Now, when I bend conduit, when I'm going for a 90 degree bend, with my stub take up, I have to consider First of all, the size of the conduit. Okay, so with the size of the conduit, I have to think about if I'm using a half inch EMT, if I'm using a three quarter inch EMT, or a one inch EMT. I have specific numbers for a stub take up depending on the actual size of the conduit that I'm bending. So, most common numbers for a stub take up value for a half inch EMT is five. For a three-quarter inch EMT, it is six. For a one inch EMT, it would be eight. What that means is I have to, when I bend my conduit and when I mark my conduit, I'm going to subtract that value from the actual value that I want. So if I want a 10 inch stub, so to speak, from here to here, I'm going to subtract, if I'm cutting or bending half inch conduit, I'm going to subtract five from that and I'm going to mark five inches off the end of the conduit in order to bend it. If I was to say have a 10 inch but I'm running a three quarter inch conduit, then I would make my first mark at four inches. So I have to always know the size of the conduit that I'm bending and I have to know the length that I need to bend in order to do my calculations. Now another piece that you want to always keep in mind when you're doing conduit bending is each bender is slightly different. Even though they're manufactured the same, there might be a slight variation. So every time you take a bender and you use it for the first time, you're going to want to calculate these values, that back take up, that stub take up, and that gain, as it will help you as you bend your conduit. So taking a piece of half inch conduit. We'll measure this piece and see what my full length is. I have a tape measure here and I'm able to measure the total length of it to start. So our total length at this point is 42 inches. So I have a 42 inch piece here. Now I'm going to mark my conduit at five inches. Since we're running a half inch, we're going to see how much we gain and what our difference is. So I will mark it at five inches here. And I will take, and with my bender, I'm going to use the arrow, like as I said before, whenever I do a stub up, I want to use my arrow as my reference. So I'm going to take that mark I have and I'm going to put it into the hook of the bender. I'm going to mark it and match it up to the arrow of the bender. I put my conduit on the floor. Whenever I do a 90 degree bend, I want my conduit on the floor itself. Put my foot on the heel of the conduit bender and the key thing whenever I'm bending a piece of conduit is to make sure that I apply pressure and it's a constant pressure. I don't let up at all or I will get what we call a kink. So I'm going to bend it back to a full 90. Okay, now that we've done our bending and we have our 90 degree bend, let's measure it to see how much stub take up we got, back take up we got, and our gain. So if I measure my stub length here, and I see what I have here, I am sitting at almost 10 and a half inches. Now I said the normal stub take up, or the average stub take up, is five inches. We are at 10 and a half, so we know that our particular bender has actually got a stub take up value of about five and a half, a little under. So we'll write that down, what we had on our stub side, 
we had a stub take up of five and a half plus our five inch mark, so that gives us a total of ten and a half inches for our stub length. Now we look at our tail length right back here. So now we can look to see how much we have for our back take, back take up. Now originally we had marked it at five, and so we had approximately with five gone, 37 inches on our tail. Let's see what we actually get for a tail length. So if I look at my actual tail length, I am out at about 34 and a quarter inch. So if I have a 34 and a quarter inch tail, and I originally had 37, I've lost a little bit. So I can take that 37 minus my 34 and a quarter, and that gives me then a value of about two and three quarters of an inch. That is the value I have for my back take up. When I take those two values and add them together, my 34 and a quarter plus my 10 and a half, I have a total length then of conduit left over of 44 and three quarters of an inch. If I look, I actually started with a length of 42. So I've actually gained two and three quarters of an inch. That's where our gain comes in, because of the radius of that 90 degree bend. So we get our gain of two and three quarter for our particular bender. We had a stub take up value of five and a half for our particular bender. And we have a back take up amount that we lost on that tailpiece of two and three quarters of an inch. So when you think, whenever you use a new bender, you're going to want to do this, and all it is is a simple 90 degree stub to calculate these values for your particular bender to make your bending more accurate. When we come back, we're going to be looking at doing some other more advanced bends, including another 90 degree bend just for our practice purposes.